Hi, it's Chantel from Fiberific. Welcome back. It's been a really long time since our last Tuesday tutorial. Uh, I had the Bendigo Sheep and Wool show and then got sick. So it's kind of pushed our schedule just a little behind. So I really appreciate you bearing with me and hanging in there until we got going again. So this week we're going to start our beautiful rainbow socks by Michaela Richter. The first thing I really want to do is to thank Michaela for allowing us to use her pattern. We're going to be going step by step through the pattern, doing things exactly how Michaela has recommended. If you want to do it a different way, you go right ahead. These are your socks. You can do what you want. We are not the knitting police here. Now, in fairness, I should say I am not the best at knitting socks. I would not describe myself as an avid sock knitter. I enjoy knitting socks, but I really, really end up with a lot of single socks. I have, I get a lot of single sock syndrome. Um, and so for those of you that don't know, it's where you finish one sock and then never cast on the next one. So I have lots of odd socks floating around the house. But in saying that, this time round, I am so thrilled. This colour changing made it so addictive to just finish one more colour. Just one more colour. I'll just do the grey and then I'll do one more colour and then one more colour. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, heel turn. And the, so the actual creation of this sock, it makes life a lot more exciting. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, so I've printed out the pattern. I know in this day and age, lots of people like to have, you know, it on their tablets or on their computers or whatever. I like that as well, but I really like a piece of paper. I like to scratch all over it. I like to grab a pencil and just write all over it and really make it clear exactly where I'm up to. And I know you can do that with your tablets. Um, and if you've got knit companion and things like that, it's really helpful. But I just personally like the piece of paper. I, I fold it up, I shove it in my bag, ends up with creases, it's a mess. But I really, I prefer to have a piece of paper. What do we need to make these gorgeous socks? Okay, so I put together a sock kit for those of you that wanted it. It came in this little box inside of it. It looks like this. So you have your 50 grams of um, main color and then you have 14 rainbow colors. Now also in the kit, I added these little packets of stitch markers. There is uh, round circular markers with one, two, three and four and a couple of blinglets. And I found that they were all I needed to make this particular pattern so hopefully you won't need anything else it depends on how you're going to do it now the pattern itself is written to use double pointed needles and I am seriously not friends with double pointed needles they don't like me I lose them I sit on them I break them I do all sorts of evil things to double pointed needles so I'm going to be using the Chowgu nine inch circulars, you can't see it there, but you can see it there, sort of, hello reflective bits. The Chowgu nine inch circulars. Personally, I'm a loose knitter, so I'm going with the 2.25 millimeters. If you're a tighter knitter, I'd recommend a two and a half. This four ply yarn for the kit really does lend itself well to those sizes. Now, if you're using your own yarn or a, or a different yarn or a hand spun yarn, make sure you're using a needle size suited to the yarn you can always adjust your stitches but if it's too hard it won't stretch so you want to make sure you're getting a nice elastic fabric because otherwise you will not be able to get them on your feet and at the end of the day that's what we want we've got our yarn we've got our needles we've got our stitch markers let's get knitting okay so we've got our pattern the first thing we need to do is cast on. It is truly going to depend on your yarn, on your needle size and on your foot and ankle size as to how many stitches you cast on. On page four of the pattern, it has got some information on stitch numbers for the different sizes, but I will link some more information in down below to help you decide how many stitches you need to cast on. Now I've used this sock yarn a lot and I, also have I have really thick ankles I can't deny it 
I'm a big girl with big legs. So I tend to cast on 72 stitches, then decrease down to 64, because while my ankles are big, the rest of my foot is a normal size seven. It's a little bit wide, but it's the stretch of the fabric is enough. The cast on recommended is a German twisted cast on. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a German twisted cast on. We've got our ball of yarn at the back with the tail to the back sorry ball of yarn to the back with our yarn leading to that and then our tail is off to the left at the front I'm a continental knitter so I like to have my yarn on the left okay so we're going to be coming in with our fingers and thumbs coming in and scooping them up like that and then just grabbing the tails now you want to make sure you've got a decent grip on it you don't want it too loose and then what we do is we bring our needle in up and under both and then back over one then scoop around and draw that through the little cross mark. You move your thumb, you pull the tail, you make it snug but not tight because this is supposed to be our stretchy bind on, cast on. So I'll do it again. So you have, you come up under both, over one, bring it around, scoop that one up and grab it, pull your thumb out, pull on the tail. Okay, now for me, I'm going to need 72 of these stitches. So I'm obviously not going to record me doing all of them. Up and over one. I do find moving my hand helps. So under both, over one, bring it around, scoop it up, drop the thumb, pull it. And just keep going until you've got your desired number of stitches for me that'll be 72 we'll catch up together once we've gotten to our right number of stitches one thing I cannot specify is the length of the piece of yarn you're going to need to cast on with the reason for this is everyone's going to be using different yarns different needle sizes with different tensions and different gauges now personally I would rather end up with a one meter long tail then have to keep redoing it over and over and over again. So I tend to leave myself for my 72 stitches on a 2.25 mil needle, I tend to leave about a meter of yarn as my tail for this cast on. I know it seems like a lot, but as I said, I'd rather have a lot left over than have to keep redoing it. Let's get on with the cast on. Okay, so we've got our 72 stitches now we need to join these together but we need to be very very careful that we do not twist these so make sure that all your little bottoms are facing into the middle if you've got anything twisted around make sure oops, make sure that it is all the right way now make sure your tails are on the right hand side as well and just make sure you know which is the actual tail and don't knit with it because you know there's a good chance I'm going to. Okay, so if you've got the kit, you will have these stitch markers, okay? Which are the one, two, three, fours. Now, as I said before, the pattern's been written for double pointed needles. So at some stage throughout the next 20 rounds of the rib pattern, you need to add these stitch markers in. Okay, so put number one here, right at the start, so that you've got your uh, marker for your beginning of the round. So use your number one for that because that is the beginning of your round just right there. Now the other thing to remember is these nine inch circulars are just a little tricky when you're first casting on. So I'm gonna actually leave that off and just use the tail stitch marker for a little while because I do have a massive tail. It's about 30 centimeters. I'll trim that down a bit later. Um, in the meantime, it's fine. It's not going to do any harm. So you just need to stretch your stitches around a little bit so that you've got some right up to the point. And again, making sure you haven't twisted any. Okay. So as I said before, these first couple of rounds of your, of your knit two, purl two for your sock cuff is going to be a little fiddly on these nine inch circulars. But if you persevere, It'll get a lot easier really fast, okay? So knit two, purl two, making sure you're knit knitting with the tail. That's more for me than you, obviously, because I'm stupid and I continuously do it. Okay, so knit two. 
I have made my cast on just it's probably a smidge too tight and I'm bumping the camera so sorry about that knit one then we've got to knit a second one then purl two And we do knit two, purl two, all the way around. So what I do tend to do is I'll do the four stitches of the repeat, knit two, purl two, and then I'll do a big shuffle of the stitches around just for these first couple of rows. So what I've done, knit one, then knit two, purl one, purl two, then a big shuffle of the stitches, shuffle, 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 all the way around. And I'll keep doing that all the way to the end. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of the first round here. I'll just move this tail out of the way. I really should trim that now that I've put my stitch marker in. I'll get some scissors and do that shortly. Now I'm not sure if you like if you notice here, I popped the stitch marker in, then did an extra couple of stitches. Look. I am queen of losing my stitch markers so I do tend to work to an extra stitch or two on either side of the stitch markers and consider that the end of my sort of knitting so that I can put it down so obviously you don't have to do this but that's just something a little trick that I prefer to do and as everyone here knows there's no pol knitting police at Fiberific there are 11,000 ways to do things if you don't like this cast on try another stretchy cast on but you just need to make sure it is a stretchy cast on because it is for the top of a sock you don't want it to cut the circulation of your foot off the actual circumference has gotten a lot easier even with just one row so the next rounds of the um, knit two purl two ribbing are going to be considerably easier than this first round if you have persevered through the first round on your nine inch circulars you will do a dance on the second round then third round and fourth round you'll be like I don't even know what I was complaining about so what we're going to do now is we have the pattern calls for 20 rows of knit two purl two we've got our first row done of our knit two purl two we've got our stitch marker placed I'll need to, in my next round of knitting I'll go through and place my stitch markers every 18 stitches the pattern will tell you how many so but basically divide by four and make sure you pop your stitch markers in in their number order it will help you further down the track we are going to be referring to the numbers as this pattern was initially written for double pointed needles she does describe needle one needle two needle three and needle four so I want to try and make this as easy as possible for us those of us that have these stitch markers if you don't have one two and three four make sure that you've got stitch markers that in your brain you can differentiate between and remember which one is the start of the round at least so if you've got lots of similar stitch markers try something a bit different for your first marker and then you can count them off and it'll make life a bit easier so I will see you next week for our joggler striping and our wonderful joins that we have for all our colors a uh, happy knitting it's time for you to fill your universe with fiber fun off you go I'll see you next week for the next section of the sock. Bye.